In this short video, we're going to run through setting up some basic approval and alert rules for two different scenarios. The first scenario will be a rule that is instigated when a user adds a new supplier onto the system. We don't want this supplier to automatically be available for purchase ordering or payments until it has been approved by a manager. So firstly, we want to put the supplier on hold and inform the user that we've done so. Then we want to send a notification to the approver to let them know that they have a supplier to approve. The second scenario that we're going to run through is slightly different, as the rule will be instigated on a scheduled basis. We want the approval and alert rules to check our stock management system for any inventory items with stock levels that have dropped below 20% of the minimum reorder level. If any items are found, then we want the rule to add the records to a user-defined table that we call a collection. So let's go into GreenTree and open up the approvals and alerts rule maintenance. We'll start off by creating the rule to put a newly entered supplier on hold until a manager approves it. Let's give this a number of one and a description of supplier hold. We want this rule to fire when a new supplier record is entered. So first of all, on the when to run tab, we'll pick the supplier record type and say that we want the rule to come into effect when we open the supplier form and add a new record. Next, we'll move on to the what to do tab and select from a predefined list of conditions. You can see from this drop down list that you can choose to have a rule fire on all sorts of different criteria, such as when certain users or groups are entering the supplier, when certain attributes change, or in our case, on all new supplier records that are entered. So if we hit the add button, the condition of all records will be added to the work area. This means that whenever a new supply record is entered, this rule will be fired. Let's move on to the next tab, and here we'll say that the next thing that we want to do is to make the supplier's account inactive so that nobody can carry out any processing on them. So then we'll add this to the work area. On the Actions tab, we can again select from a list of predefined actions. If I click on the drop down, you can see that we can do all sorts of things such as choose to assign custom fields, create follow ups, display messages, or even send an email or a text message. In this case, I'm going to choose to display a pop-up message to the entry user to inform them that the supplier account will need approval. Then I'm going to select the workflow approval routing that I want this record to follow. In this case, I'm going to select a workflow that I've set up called normal approval. If we pop this open, we can see that we have a sequential approval flow set up that will firstly require approval by Cameron Cook, then by Steve Simpson, and lastly by anyone in the managers group. However, you can see here that the manager's level can approve previous levels or even override previous rejections. So if the approver is part of the managerial group, then they have overall authority over the previous approvers. If the supply record is approved, then I can choose to notify the created by user via email. Here I can hard code the text that goes to the user, as well as inserting special properties which reference the actual record. The same goes for if the record is rejected, I can also email the created by user. So now that we've created the rule, let's go and create a desktop that will show our approvers what they need to approve, then we can go and test the rule out. To do this, we go into Workflow, System, Organise Desks, and then go into the Desktop Designer. We will give it a name and caption of approvals, and we'll structure it to have six rows and nine columns. This way we can display the data panels in an easy to view layout. We will also tick the show background checkbox to get a coloured background rather than just a plain white one. Now from our toolbox we need to scroll down and find the approvals data box and then drag it onto our layout area. Once it's positioned correctly we can then expand the panel down and across to the right to make it the size that we want. I'm going to leave most of the properties as they are, just tick the right click to approve reject box so that we can actually approve directly from the desktop without having to open up the record. So now, when loaded, the panel on the desktop will show me any records that I need to approve. We're now able to test out our rule. So if we open up the supplier entry screen and move it across to one side so that we can see the approvals panel on the desktop in the background, then we'll go and add a new supplier account. Once we've entered all the details, we're ready to click save and test that the rule fires. So you'll see that our pop-up message appears notifying the entry user that the record has gone for approval. Also, you'll see in the background that the record has appeared in the desktop approvals window. Now, if I'm the approver, from my desktop, I'm able to either right click on the record and approve directly from there, or I can open the record up, check the details and approve from within the supplier screen. 
So the first rule works as expected. So let's move on to create the second rule where we want the system to check our stock levels on a scheduled basis and notify us of any items that are within 20% of the reorder level. Before we go into the rule creation, we need to set up something called an alert collection. This is basically a user-defined table that collects data sent to it by the rule. So if we give this collection a name of stock reorder and then choose stock item as the record type for it to collect. Now we're ready to go and create the rule. We want this rule to run on stock items. So first of all, on the when to run tab, we'll pick the stock item record type. Now this time, rather than choosing for the rule to fire when a new record is entered, we're going to choose that this rule is run on a scheduled basis. I have a daily schedule already set up here. This is a task schedule set up to run at 8 p.m. every evening. Next, we'll move on to the what to do tab and select from the predefined list of conditions. You can see that this drop down list is now different to the one we saw against the supplier rule. The conditions here all relate to stock records instead. We're going to choose quantity available with X percentage of the minimum reorder level. We can then put in a percentage of 20% and choose a location if required. Let's move on to the actions tab and here we can again select from a list of predefined actions. In this case, I'm going to choose to add the records to an alert collection, but you can see here that there are many other things that we're able to do. So we'll select the alert collection of stock reorder that we've just created. So now that we've created the rule, we need to go and add a panel into our desktop to show us our stock reorder alert collection table, then we can test the rule out. So if we open up our desktop designer again, and this time from the toolbox, select alert collection, then drag it to the other side of our layout, and then expand the panels down and to the right. I'll give this a caption of stock within 20% of reorder level. I'll choose the alert collection to show of stock reorder, and I'll also tick the can remove items box. So then we have the option of removing records from the desktop once we've dealt with them. So if we load this desk now, we're ready to test out our rule. I'll move the screen to one side so that we're able to see the alert collection desktop table being populated when we fire the rule. Now, rather than having to wait until the daily task scheduler is run, I'm able to fire the rule instantly by clicking on the run now button. You'll now see that my desktop alert collection is populated with all of the stock items that meet the rules criteria. And that concludes our quick look at the basic approval and alert functions. For more information, please contact info at prerogative.co.uk.